Right, here we go. So, uh, Jason's just brought this land over in. He's stopped by uh, for me to have a look at this. And, well, having a look at it, seems to be oil everywhere. And I mean everywhere. And what's happening is it's blowing out of the, um, the oil cap. And Jason changed the oil yesterday, the Canadian tyre. And uh, what have we got today? Nothing. That's only about 200 kilometres. It's not much, maybe 250 kilometres, so it's blown the oil out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this camera on the stand and uh, we're going to have a quick diagnostic test of this. We're going to uh, take the glow plugs out, if they will come out, and uh, we're going to check and see if it's the rings or the, or the valve guides that's causing this back pressure because there's something very strange. I've never seen one as bad as that before. So let's set the camera up and um, we'll do a video of it when it's running and, um, and then we'll have a look and see what, uh, what the pressures are. The engine didn't sound too bad. We can, I don't know if you can see. But that is blowing off there. Usually there's no problem. You can just to say see a faint glow, a faint amount of smoke coming out of here. But again, it doesn't sound too bad. So it could be just valve guides which causes crankcase pressure. So we'll do a test. We'll pull the glow plugs out. We'll see what's wrong. So we're going to do a compression test on this engine. We're going to put our adapter into number one. Spin it down. bit of a tight fit but it goes in. Uh, can you pass me that key there Tom? Just the key, yeah. That's it. Just a little nip down, that's all it needs. Make sure there's no pressure in this machine. It's on. Now it's most important that you un unplug the wire off the back of the injector pump when you do this so there's no uh, it's not going to fire up because just with the compression of this test it could fire one cylinder. So the magical figure we're looking for is 348. So if you want to put that box onto that chair please. And if Jason cranks over the engine make sure it's in neutral. Okay. And crank the engine. Okay. Good. Neutral. Okay. Crank away. And I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Oh, you'll have to put the battery back on. Okay, my bad. Okay, so now the battery's back on, we can crank it away. All right. So we've got 340. It's not too bad. Nothing too serious there. Let's have a double check of that. 340. So I'm going to do the rest of it and let's see what uh, see what gives. So I look at this old scoreboard and we've got one and two is 340, which is, should be 348, it's not too bad, but number three, 260. That's well down. So it looks like we'll have to do some exploring inside this engine. So it looks like we're going to have to take the cylinder head off at least to see where we are. So looks like we're going to have to get on with that. So we decided to pull the cylinder head off this car and just as a quick tipette for anybody who wants to do this you don't have to, do, you don't have to pull the manifold off, just pull it back take the intake manifold off, take your bolts off You've got to take this bolt out first to get the bolt that goes into here. Um, take this bracket off here. I think this has been off before because the pipes here are supposed to be attached to a clip down there and they're not. Uh, obviously dis disconnect your battery but you, then again see if you pull that back you don't have to mess about with um, undoing all the exhaust manifolds and stuff like that and the turbo pipes. So the next thing what we're doing, we've taken off the injector pipes, taken off the bracket that goes onto the uh, head, 
and then um, well we're going to take the rockers off rocker shafts take the injectors out and then we should see what's wrong with this now <clears throat> as a quickie somebody's had this off before because they've put a metal gasket on now my original thought was that the head gaskets blown but I've never known one of these uh, head, uh, metal head gaskets go so I think we're in for a lot of surprises let's see what let's see what happens when we take the head off okay I made a video just this morning about using a slide hammer and this is actually how we use it so we're going to pull these injectors out and that's how they come out perfectly see no damage that'll do okay so we got the head off and this is number three that was burning uh, that was low and look at all the oil on it and look at all the oil here well that could be coming back through the breather but this is bad now let's have a look inside the cylinder and you can see where oil's been washing around the cylinder walls I thought it might have been the gasket blowing into here but it isn't because the gasket's perfect there's nothing wrong with it um, bit of a mystery um, so what we're going to do overnight we're going to level these pistons off so it, it, they're all equal and we're going to put a cup full of diesel into each bore and we're going to have a look at it later and see what happens to it because there's something mysteriously wrong if so, uh, Jason was saying that this engine had been rebuilt and it looks sort of clean inside it doesn't look like it has been uh, used a lot but it's very easy to break the piston rings putting them into the cylinders so I wonder if that's happened let's find out so what I've done is I've put a, a little bit of di I've leveled up the pistons so they're all the equal height in the bore and I've put an equal amount of diesel in each cylinder we're going to leave them a little while and see what happens this could sort of work out if it's the rings the bars look very good so I've got a suspicion a rings cracked we'll see this might take until the morning or it might be even quicker who knows so after a while the um the diesel in the cylinders didn't go down so it had to be something else so I thought I'd get do the old trick and have a look at these valves and seeing how tight they are and guess what when I got to the exhaust valve is that the exhaust? Yeah. yep the exhaust valve for number three this was rocking around like a drunken sailor what could it be was it the valve guide one well it was a little bit more than that the guide is so loose it's worn in the head so much I was hoping you can see this a bit better look at that the heads worn out that's been like that for a long time so what's been happening as the shaft, if as the rock has been going up and down, it's been pushing this valve backwards and forwards, and it looks like I don't know if this valve is seized in the the guide. I really don't know. It's a funny colour. At first, I thought it was a brass one, a brass guide, but I just put it through the grinder, and no, it's cast iron. So I was a bit wrong there. But um, yeah that's really bad and it's a shame really because look at I just squirted a bit of brake cleaner on and uh, look how clean it's come up very very quickly but interesting to note the top of this guide has snapped off and there is no sign whatsoever of the rubber um, seal or the top of the guide it's absolutely nowhere I looked in the head nothing and probably this would be the reason why it's got no compression um, perhaps you can see how burnt the seat is on the valve that's because it's been going 
chattering backwards and forwards and, it, and it's not been sealing right. And all, like I say, what's been happening too is that the compression gas has been coming up here and also when it's going, be, going down again on your induction stroke it's been sucking oil in like crazy because the oil has been sat in this little hollow here and it's just pulling it in. Oh man, it's a wonder. It, 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 I never really noticed it smoking. Mind you, then again, I didn't really drive it. But um, yeah, I have a spare. I always have a spare replacement head on hand, and uh, that's what it's going to get. I mean, this is a 1992 300 TDI. It's a very strange car, this one, because it's um, what's called a ROW spec, rest of world spec. And it's um, a, two, a 300 TDI in a TD5 body shell. They did a few of them for Africa. And in fact, they kept doing them until I think it was 2006. Africa and other strange places. So, um, just to round, wrap this up, because there's no point putting this together. There's no point going through this anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know what's caused that. If anybody's got any ideas, let me know. Because we saw this a few weeks ago on another truck. Um, but two, two of them had gone near the exhaust. So is it the exhaust gas temperature getting too hot? And if it is, why didn't these ones go? You know, why didn't they go? Why, why the middle ones? I don't know. So anyway, um... The guy wants his truck back as soon as possible, so I'll be up very, very early tomorrow morning to try and get this done so he can get him back on the road. Good job I've found it. I've got a head. But, yeah, no, it's always nice to have one in stock, just in case, and today's the day. So anyway, if you picked up any tips with this video, um, you know, let me know if they were helpful and, um, yeah, we're going to make this Land Rover better by... by leaps and bounds I mean it, it emptied all its oil in a few hundred kilometers so we can't we can't go wrong with this one we're bound to make this Land Rover better so anyway there we go um, if you like this uh, subscribe and if you've got any suggestions you let me know I don't know what's caused it talk to you later